At different times in our lives, we're all bound to reach a stage that feels like the edge of our given capacity, when everything we once knew stops working the way it used to, and we're forced to confront who we've become at that limit. And we do have an instinct to adapt. It's not just part of what makes us human. It's also how we survive change in our environment. It's how we evolve through it, and most importantly, despite it. But what happens when the environment itself changes? And what does adaptation look like when it's no longer just about survival, but also growth? Now, before I tell you what happens when that line to the seemingly impossible is crossed, I want to start by sharing one of those moments for me, not in space, but rather here on Earth, specifically in Stockholm, Sweden. When I was around 11 or 12 years old, I began struggling with very severe social anxiety and I didn't have the courage for pretty much any kind of interaction. So I found ways to disappear, sometimes in the bathrooms, sometimes in the back of the library, or anywhere quiet enough for me to justify feeling invisible. And there, I read books. I read everything I could get my hands on, from comic books to encyclopedias, and oddly enough, medical books. Now, I don't know if it's because everything around me was unpredictable, but I found comfort in reading about the systems that are within us. And I didn't realize it at the time, but it's not exactly, I guess, common for an 11-year-old to find comfort in reading medical books. But I did. A few years later, as I entered my teenage years, I began stepping into spaces I never saw myself in. I attended academic events, I met people, got involved in projects, and I learned to show up in ways that truly terrified me to my core. And each time I stepped into those new spaces, my brain was adapting as it moved through the nerves, the doubt, and the need to prove that I, as well, deserved to be there. I remember one moment very clearly. I was at a space conference in Gothenburg, and we were on a long bus ride um, to an observatory by the coast. I was sitting next to someone I'd met, and I remember looking out the window and saying, I think this is the coolest thing I'll ever do. This is my peak. And they, of course, laughed and asked why. And I said, because I'm just 16. I have no idea how I got here, or why I'm even here. I just am. And I meant it. With every part of my conscious mind, I truly believed that this was the best I could do, and that I had reached the edge of my own capacity, the point where everything I knew and all those tools could only take me that far. But limits, as it turns out, are just moments of the seemingly impossible right before adaptation happens. Funnily enough, the reason I began attending those events was because of my social anxiety. I was encouraged to enter spaces where I could hone the comfort I'd created in my love for curiosity. And in the following years, everything unfolded like a chain reaction of events, from one opportunity to the next, one new limit to the next. And speaking in scientific terms now, the catalyst, in my opinion, wasn't luck or timing. It was what I taught myself as a kid, hiding in those school bathrooms, the ability to create purpose out of curiosity itself. So curiosity was my currency, and it's yours too. So what happens when our ambition and curiosity takes us to places further than what we can imagine for ourselves? And how do we adapt to those new mental and physical environments? In a way, that's the same question that encapsulates a subject that took me all the way across the world to Canada to study human spaceflight. I don't know if you've noticed, but space is actually the ultimate environment for understanding what happens inside of us when we're forced to adapt to the extremes. When we talk about human spaceflight, we're really talking about what happens when the body's sense of balance, what we call homeostasis, is pushed to its limit. On Earth, homeostasis regulates everything from blood pressure, temperature, sleep cycles, metabolism, and so much more. In space, however, that balance is altered immensely by the new environment. The systems that have evolved for life under Earth's conditions, such as atmosphere and gravity, now have to suddenly function without it. Quite interestingly, we see that blood and other fluids shift up towards the head. So the heart doesn't have to work as hard to pump blood upwards. So it eventually weakens over time. Without gravity, the muscle mass decreases. And even at the cellular level, the, the movement of particles across membranes changes. 
So our entire physiology of our body is trying to find a new comfortable equilibrium, which is a middle point, in an environment it wasn't designed to survive in. The brain goes through the same process, actually, but by rewiring itself. So the regions that used to rely on gravity for spatial awareness and coordination lose their normal feedback loop. So the brain actually creates new neuronal connections to make sense of motion, balance, and orientation. The same thing happens when we're in a new environment on Earth and in space. During spaceflight training, astronauts often describe this as needing to relearn where their body is. Some astronauts even experience spatial illusions or feel as if the world has literally flipped upside down. And that is neuroplasticity, the brain adapting to an environment it has no evolutionary memory of. So in that sense, space medicine is adaptation made visible. It's proof of how far the human body and mind can go. And in my definition, it's the meaning of what redefining limits actually is, but at a cosmic level. Now we see that neuroplasticity is biological proof that who you are now doesn't have to be who you'll be forever. It's proof that where you are now isn't necessarily as far as you're actually able to go. And those tools I mentioned in the beginning, the ones you think you don't have yet and the ones you're seeking to find, those are already built into you. They're just waiting for you to take that step towards your new frontier. Building that new frontier for me took a lot of time. I had to redefine the boundaries that once controlled my life, the actions that told me what I can or can't do. And all of this taught me an essential perspective that I'd like to bring with you today. That the same neuroplasticity that helps an astronaut relearn which way is up and which way is down is the same biological force that lives in every single one of us. It means that whatever limits you feel are fixed today are not endpoints at all, but rather frameworks for growth, places you can return to, compare yourself against, and realize just how far you've come. My story, like many of yours, is proof that our capacity for growth is our greatest survival tool. So take a moment, look at how far we've all come. A species that once huddled around fires, now sending probes to distant stars, and people who are willing to go to the beyond. That journey is not just a testament to our technology, but to the biology and to the limitless potential that is encoded within us. It proves that the edge of our capacity is not a final destination, but a starting line. So combining medicine and space have come naturally to my story. They were the two subjects I stuck by when everything around me felt confusing. It was only in my last year of high school where I realized that somehow they have to make sense together. Somehow, that looking up has to go with hand in hand with looking within. And now more than ever, we find that the endless universe is at the tip of our fingers, whether it's through knowledge, possibilities, or technology. However, we still find ourselves limiting our individual ambitions through fear, neglect of personal growth, and comparison. And that's why looking up towards the sky of endless possibilities goes hand in hand with looking inwards towards the potential that you hold within. There is one thing I'd want you to take from this. It's that your perceived potential is not the best that you can be, but rather the beginning of who you're becoming. And that ambition will take you to places you're not naturally meant to survive in, but places that you will strive in.